Um, what are we doing? We are about 20 past five in the morning, so we're up about four, 4.20, just had a bit of coffee, did some uh, mobility, some triggering out, stretching, feeling really good actually. Yesterday didn't wasn't able to get the strength session in, so we're gonna head down to the gym, get a little bit of training in, hit the sauna, do a bit of recovery, and then gotta head back to Broad Beach with the guys um, and then finish off the weight cuts, but um, just waiting for them all to wake up and then text their weights through so we can figure out a bit of a game plan. But yeah, we're gonna have the whole crew. A lot of the guys will meet here and then we'll head over and we'll finish it up. But everyone's tracking really well, like really, really surprisingly well. Like I shouldn't shouldn't say it's surprising, but really, really well. Everyone's hit the numbers perfectly. So this morning should be super cruisy, which is good because it just relieves so much stress and then yeah, everything will go nicely and then head to weigh-ins weigh in, rehydrate them, get some food, and then we're done for the day. Asked me 12 months ago if I'd be doing tippy-toe calf raises in a gym. I would, I would have punched myself. Yeah, so just leave it now. So what is it? 7.20, so we're heading over. The game plan is to have everything set up like 8, 8.30ish. Weigh-ins at 1 p.m., so what that gives us like four, four and a half hours to, to get these guys on weight. So some of the guys have a, a little bit to do, but nothing too crazy if everything runs smoothly, if everyone stays calm, if we've got the right temperature of everything. So, and we've got a good crew with us, like we've got lots of support. Like that's the big thing is like when you're running around by yourself, it can get quite stressful and you might miss little things, but we've got a really big crew here. So lots of help, which goes a long way doing this. So it's not too hot, but hot enough to get them sweating. Um, so we like to just yeah, make sure that's all set up and ready to go. And um, we'll start the first round shortly. Like I think it's easy to like dehumanize athletes, especially like top level athletes, it's easy to dehumanize them. But like these are guys and like what we do, you get to know them so well and like you know their families, like you know their kids and like you know them like on a really like deep level. So like you want it, you don't want anything to go wrong to them. So it's like you have to be so on top of all these things. But like knowing all of that, like I think a lot of people, they're a bit naive or like that saying of like ignorance is bliss with this process is they just don't know what they don't know and if you don't know what could potentially go wrong I think that's where it gets a bit dangerous because people will just push push and push not knowing what the potential consequences could be so I think it's like I always feel a bit nervous doing this because like we appreciate what the risk are so much and I think that's very important though because appreciating that risk makes you manage it so much better and like really be a lot more dialed in and smart, switched on and like, yeah, you laugh and joke and stuff, but this business end is like, it's exactly that, it's the business end. It's like their health and their well-being. So you've really got to be dialed on. And it's like a real pressure cooker situation. I think a lot of people like what we do and they see it on social media and they see like everything that happens after all the travel and like the cameras and blah, blah, and they think, oh yeah, that's really cool. But it's like this right now is the really important part and it's like there's a lot of pressure on you like i don't really know any other sport maybe like cycling or something like that where there's that type of pressure on the nutritionist and the dietitian to get this right because you really are like you're the captain of the ship you're guiding them through everyone in that room is looking at you for direction and you're constantly running numbers and like what we're doing right now we've got so many guys like we've got like five or six guys all making weight at the same time so you're constantly managing that and like then you're like trying to compartmentalize what's important for each person and then putting it into action and directing the team around. So it's like a real, like really intricate process that if you're just watching it, it might just look like, oh, it's pretty simple, just throw them in the bath or wrap them up and it'll be good. But 
there's a lot that goes to it and there's a lot of pressure to get the timings right and really nail it and it's good when it all comes together but like I think when the boat starts rocking and if things go a bit a bit uh, off stray or a bit off course that's where you've really got to know your stuff like if things don't go to plan you've got to really be able to strip it back and go okay what's happening here what can I do to fix this problem how do I problem solve it and how do I do this so I'm looking after this athlete and looking after their well-being and what's the best move for me to make right now to look to do that to make sure that they're okay to make sure they're going home to their family and their kids and whoever else so it's like it's a real pressure cooker situation I think it's if you're not getting nervous you probably don't appreciate the risk of it even if you're doing like a mild to moderate cut there's still so much risk and you have to appreciate and respect that and then act accordingly to it Would you say 200 heads? 70, one, one. So you'd be 300 plus these, 100 would be like 200 off. Oh. Thank you. Real close. As you can see when we get in there, it's quite hectic, right? So like, there's a lot of moving parts going on and like a lot of people around. I think my job in there, first and foremost, is like, you're the captain of the ship, you gotta stay calm. I remember someone told me that, like, if you're on a flight and you see the flight attendant freak out, then everyone's gonna freak out. So you just gotta stay calm, trust the process. Like, we know what we do is really good. We've, we've perfected this over years and years, so we know it's gonna work. We just gotta run by the numbers, but everything's tracking well. We've got two guys, like the two of the bigger ones, or I would categorize like the high risk, tracking really well. Vital signs really good. We'll just do one more round each of them, and then everyone's on weight, and good to go. Um, I feel like Jack, like, mentally primed me pretty good. But um, yeah, it's, it's hot in there, like sweaty. Jordy's like, wear something they don't mind sweating in. Uh, but nothing kind of compares. It's, yeah, it's super sweaty, but obviously nothing what the boys have to go through. But no, it's good. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a good experience, but glad I'm on, uh, not in the bathtub, that's for sure. So just last couple of rounds coming up. Um, yeah, last couple of rounds coming up. One of the boys fucking up. <laughs> yeah, so last couple of rounds coming up. Um, one of the boys, Darcy, just got two kilos and then all the rest of the boys, just a few hundred grams left to go. So yeah, it should be a pretty smooth one. Ketosis. <laughs> Here we go. I'm gonna hype over. I'm gonna do my blood now. I'm definitely, yeah. we're, all definitely we're all in ketosis. We're done. We're done. Ooh. Food. Let's, Let's go. go. Oh, yeah. We're hanging around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. Thanks. So, welcome to the TFD eating challenge. We're gonna try everything on the menu at Guzman. Guzmani, you got this? Yeah, I got the fries. Yeah. Oh, Spicy chicken. No, that's with what? Yeah, with guac. Yeah, with guac. Yeah, boy. Spicy chicken without guac. Yeah, is it mild Jordy. chicken? Um, is that mild chicken? Mild chicken? Oh, is that you, love? Um, I think I'd want a spicy chicken. Spicy chicken, coriander, oh, yeah. and guac? Definitely want a coriander. <laughs> you did? Yep. Oh, uh, I, well, I know I asked for coriander to be the defining moment. I don't know how that table is. They should have a thing for you and yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if they got rid of that because of COVID, yeah. so I just asked for it. Oh, uh, yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks so much. Sorry. Really went well, like, all those guys smashed it. Like, that team, like, CMBT Training Centre, one of the most professional teams in Australia, I'd say. Every single one of them in that professional fight team. So, so, so impressive how they held them, like, how they handle themselves during camp with their nutrition and everything else. Like, that was probably one of the most professional weight cuts I've been a part of. So, yeah, that was a really good day. Long, long two days. Glad that's over. That went really well.